guys. Today I'm out here just snowshoeing and I thought I would talk to you about a few I thought I'd talk to you about a few different things and one of them is what I consider the art of staying warm in the winter. And this is what I like to dub and what you'll hear in this video quite a bit is thermal buoyancy. So before we jump too far into the video, let's take let's take a second to understand what buoyancy is. So essentially what buoyancy is, and I like to think of a buoy when I think of buoyancy, it really means that, you know, whatever is sitting in the water is not below the water, but it's also not above the water. It's somewhere in the middle. Like I said, thinking of a buoy, you know, the buoy is not completely submerged in the water, but it's also not sitting on top of the water. It's somewhere in the middle. And that is what I like to think when I think of thermal buoyancy. And what I mean by this is essentially, as I'm sitting here or standing here talking to you, that's what the level that I like to be at. That, that I'm not too cold, I'm not too warm. And in fact, I actually like to think of the buoyancy of humans in water because humans tend to sit far lower. So a buoy is designed to sit, you know, about halfway, whereas a human will sit about 80 to even 90% in the water. And while hopefully you wouldn't be that cold, that is generally the gist that I like to think of when I think of coming out in the winter and staying warm. Because ultimately, when I'm standing here, like I am talking to the video, my objective or my goal for proper insulation is that I should be cool but not cold. And that is another thing that I'm going to mention quite a bit in this video. And being cool but not cold basically means that I feel the cold on the outside of, you know, like I can feel it on my skin. I can feel the cold there. Like I'm aware that it is cold outside, but I physically on the inside, like at my core and even my whole body is not cold itself. It might be cool to the touch, but I'm not cold. Now some people may ask, why don't you want to be physically warm when just standing here, you know, hanging out, talking, or even just soaking in the views? The reason why is because whether you're hiking, skiing, camping, backpacking, bushcrafting, practicing survival, any of that, there's going to be at some point during your trip, either coming in, going out, or during your practice, where you are going to do some form of strenuous activity. And when that time happens, your heat or your body is going to produce more heat and the temperature overall is going to rise. And two things, two problems will occur. One, if your clothes are not doing a good enough job at dissipating that heat, you're going to overheat and that leads to sweating. And sweating, as I'm sure many of you are aware, is not a good thing in the winter because when you sweat, of course, that makes the fabric and the materials that you're wearing wet and it's far harder to um, it's far harder to get those materials to become dry again. And at the same time, uh, you know, and at the same time, of course, sweating, perspiring is another bad thing because you already lose, your body loses a lot of water or a lot of moisture in the cold. In fact, the severe cold takes more moisture out of your body than severe heat does. Uh, so, you know, sweating only helps aid in that whole process of losing moisture and losing water from your body. And of course, the more moisture and water your body loses, the more you have to make up for. So it's, like I said, really not a good idea. And so the objective is to have clothes that breathe fairly well and actually let your body climatize to a lower temperature. So a lot of us in the summer get used to our bodies sitting, you know, sitting at about a comfortably warm level. We always feel warm. And the objective in the winter actually changes where you want your body to feel cool to the touch. Now, once again, if you're shivering, if you're shaking, if you are, you know, physically cold, then you need more insulation. And, you know, you're not, you don't have enough layers or you don't have enough of a system to keep you warm enough. But the objective is to be cool. Like at this point right now, I've been standing here for a good about 15 to 20 minutes and my body does feel cool but not cold at all. 
So that is the overall objective for thermal buoyancy. And that's the best way, I think, whenever breaking down, you know, when people ask me, well, what should I wear? What should I buy? It's a very hard question for me to answer because each and every person is different. And depending on the layer or depending on, you know, how, depending on the amount of body fat you have and depending on your size, your shape, that those are all going to be factors. If you have more body fat, you need less insulation. Unfortunately for someone like myself, I have very little body fat, so I need a lot more insulation. So for me, I have a mid-layer, or I have a very strong base layer, I have a mid-layer, and then of course I have a really strong outer layer. Actually, all my layers are pretty strong, and I actually need that to stay warm, adequately warm in these temperatures. And of course, the temperature does play another role into you know what type of layering you need to achieve thermal buoyancy. And of course, the other, the last factor is your body and climatizing your body. So us Alaskans, people who have been here in Alaska for quite a few years, like myself, naturally are more accustomed to colder temperatures. So my body climatizes to these colder temperatures easier than someone who has come from Arizona and has never been to Alaska. Someone like that would struggle a lot more with colder temperatures like these. So once again, you know, I can say that what I'm wearing on for a breakdown of my body is that I have, so I use base layers from Under Armour, they're the 4.0 base layer, and uh, for my upper layer, I'm using at this temperature, which is about 10 above, I'm using a uh, Arteryx Kyanite or Kyanite mid layer, and then I'm wearing an Arteryx Beta AR for my outer shell, and then for my pants, I'm just using Fjell Raven Vita Pros, and like I said, base layers, Under Armour base layers under that, and just wearing some wool socks, and of course, you know, just gloves. Then for my hat and my kind of head layering system, I'm using an Under Armour face mask and a Carhartt, just normal beanie. So that's my system for this temperature. And once again, that keeps me comfortably cool. And of course, as I work up, like say when I go snowshoeing up this hill, it's going to be a strenuous activity and I'm going to heat up. But because my system is keeping me, because it ventilates well and I'm breathable, I'm not going to overheat when my body starts to work harder. And because I'm naturally sitting at a cooler level, uh, I'm naturally going to take more, it's gonna take, it's gonna take more time for me to get hot again. So that's the basics to my system. I also almost forgot to mention, of course, I do also have a pair of mittens here in case I really do slow down and I wanna sit down or take some time to do carving or any bushcrafting activities. I like to carry a couple, or I like to carry a pair of mittens usually strapped to the side of me just for easy reach in case gloves begin to fail or if I get too cold. Now, in these temperatures with my activity level, these gloves are perfectly fine, but Having a couple or having a pair of mittens is pretty darn handy because you never know when you'll need them. So anyways, that is my basics to how to stay warm in the cold. And once again, it's really not a focus on staying warm as much as it is a focus on how to not, how to stay comfortably cool. Once again, being cool, but not cold. And so that's the basics of thermal buoyancy and I'm sure there's a better way to put it. That's just how I put it. And hopefully this video helps you guys in your endeavors uh, to go outside in the winter. I still think that it is a lot of fun to go out in the winter. Tons of people ask me, you know, what do I do in the winter? And I tell them that I snowshoe, you know, I camp, I do all these kinds of things that I do in the summer, minus the snowshoeing, uh, you know, in the winter, because I have a system that is effective and it works for me and it allows me to still come out in the winter. And so anyways, guys, hopefully this video has helped you and hopefully it's been enjoyable. As always, God bless and I'm out.